And good morning, everybody. Welcome to Casual Coffee with Ken. My name is Ken. Thank you so much for joining me on this Thursday morning, and we are almost done with this week, and uh, that's a good thing because <laughs> it feels like it's been a very long week. But I hope you are all doing well today. If you're new here, this is a live show, so we can interact through the chat. Uh, I can see your uh, comments on the screen here, and I can pull them in to the, the show uh, as needed. So uh, I just wanted to say good morning. Thank you all for joining me. What I do here is I try to share positive news stories that you don't necessarily find uh, being given a lot of attention on mainstream media, either uh, local news or network news. And because positivity is really important in life, but maybe never as important as right now. So I just look for, for fun, interesting, lighthearted, and sometimes inspiring stories to share with you. I can find these fairly easily because I'm looking for them, but a lot of people, especially a lot of older people who don't know how to do that, uh, Maybe this will help you out then. So that's what I'm hoping anyway. So this has been a weird week, but, uh, you know, we're, we're getting through it. I, I'd be interested to hear from you what you're doing to occupy your time during this, uh, this pandemic. And if you are new here and this is your first time commenting on the show, please let me know where in the world you are watching from, because I find that fascinating. I always love to know where where people are. It's great that we have the internet, that we can communicate from halfway across the world. Uh, I had someone uh, drop by the other day from Scotland. I've had people from Canada comment and, and, and say hello. And it's it's just great. I love it. So that's, that's my favorite thing about doing this rather than just recording a video and uploading it. So with all that uh, out of the way, let's go ahead and get to the first, <coughs> excuse me, get to the first story. And this is particularly exciting uh, because of what it means for those who are seriously ill from COVID-19. And these are just initial studies, though, but they are very encouraging. And I, I think we need to acknowledge that that there is some progress being made, which is wonderful. So there are some studies by teams in China that show patients who are, uh, in some cases, critically ill with COVID-19, uh, they are getting uh, blood transfusions from people who have... Uh, uh, I hate the Guardian. <laughs> um, the long and short of it is that they are getting blood transfusions from patients who have recovered from COVID-19, and that is improving their outcomes significantly. So people who were previously on ventilators uh, have been able to be brought off the ventilators, and and that's entirely due to receiving the blood transfusion from people who have recovered from the illness. So people who are critically ill with COVID-19, um, yeah, there is some hope that by giving them blood transfusions from people who have recovered from the virus, uh, th the outcomes for these critically ill patients can be improved dramatically in some cases. So I think that's wonderful. I love that. I love the uh, of the fact that that's a thing. And good morning, Nancy. How are you? Hope you're doing well today. Happy Thursday to you. We're, we're almost there. We're almost through the week. So glad you could join us today. And Sean, good morning. Glad to see you made it. Uh, 
Hope things are going well for you as well. I know you've got a lot going on today. So, so that was an important story, uh, I think, just because it's promising and it could change things dramatically for, for those who are more uh, adversely affected by COVID-19. Uh, so wanted you to be aware it's not all hopeless. There's, there's good work being done. There's progress being made. We still have to be smart about how we, we move forward from all of this. We still need to, to shelter in place, and we really need to continue working on just flattening the curve. And uh, there's a, a rush, it feels like, in, in certain circles to hurry up and get everything back to normal. And all of the medical experts really agree that that would be catastrophic. So we're not out of the woods yet, but I did want you to know that there is some solid progress being made and that the, it's, it's cause to, to feel good, to feel hopeful on that front. Now, I've uh, covered other stories on past episodes of, of this show where people, celebrities, uh, people with lots of money, some of them have been stepping up and really doing the right thing in this time. And I might not always agree with a lot of their personal beliefs or maybe even their politics, but I'm going to give credit where credit is due because it's important. And if someone is stepping up to make a major contribution in the form of money uh, or, or time or donations or whatever, I, I think they deserve recognition on here. So with that being said, uh, I wanted to share this story about Twitter's founder, Jack Dorsey. He has donated, or pledged rather, one billion dollars of his own money basically 28% of his net worth to uh, COVID-19 relief efforts. Now that's not coming from his Twitter money. It's coming from his shares of stock in Square. Some of you might be familiar with Square. It's a little dongle that you can plug into your smartphone and swipe credit cards and take credit card payments with. That's his company too and he owns a lot of stock in it, and so he's going to be slowly share, uh, selling off shares of his stock in Square to the tune of $1 billion over the course of it. And he's uh, going to give the money to an organization called Start Small Foundation, and they will distribute it from there to various COVID-19 relief efforts. He's going all in on this in a number of ways, not the least of which is that he's going to be offering, according to this uh, article on Good News Network, he's going to be offering full transparency of how the money is being used and where it's going by tracking everything in a publicly available Google document. So you and I are going to be able to go to this Google document and keep tabs on what's going on, where the money's going. Uh, as he put it, quote, life is too short, so let's do everything we can today to help people now. So Jack Dorsey is undoubtedly a person of a uh, He's a polarizing figure, I guess, in certain circles because of some of the things he's done over on Twitter. But this is amazing. It's a very significant contribution. And I I think it's inspiring. I really do. Uh, I love to see this. It reminds me that people who have just an insane amount of good fortune in their life, uh, they, can, they can do amazing things and they can make a meaningful difference in the lives of so many others should they choose to. And he is choosing to do that. And 
So I, I think that's worthy of recognition, and I hope that it makes you feel maybe just a little bit uh, more hopeful today, uh, because it's it's going to be through these dramatic uh, monetary gestures from people who have the means to do such a thing. It's going to be through those efforts that our progress uh, forward happens uh, at a quicker pace than it normally would. Okay, now, now this next one, we're going to scale it down a bit. I'm going to go across the pond to England. This guy is a teacher, so obviously he doesn't have a billion dollars to give anybody. But he's still doing what he can to help out. And, uh, and because he's not a multi-billionaire, he's not a captain of industry, he's just a teacher, and we all know that teachers are extremely important everywhere, uh, I think uh, this qualifies for my story of the day because it's particularly uh, inspiring to me. So his name is Zane Powells, and obviously everything is, is locked down. Uh, he, he is personally delivering groceries to children who might not otherwise eat regularly during this whole lockdown. Now, he's choosing to walk to do this. And that's a personal choice. He doesn't have to do that, but he wants to because he says he enjoys getting exercise that way. So part of what he's doing, he's walking over five miles every day to deliver school meals to dozens of kids. And for students who live more than five miles outside the area, uh, other teachers are also helping out, but they're driving. <laughs> um, and so there's a uh, hundred children that this is helping and they are frequently categorized as vulnerable who may not otherwise get a meal they depend on these uh, school meals to supplement their food every day and so it's it's he particularly loves doing this because he gets to to see the kids kind of and you know albeit from a distance and check on them and just see how they're doing. Because this has got to be a scary time if you're a kid. Now, some of these kids, and I don't know who they are because this was definitely not me as a child, uh, but they have been asking for extra homework while they are off school. Uh, so kudos to them, I guess. That's good. But uh, before he was a teacher, uh, according to this article on uh, the Grimsby Telegraph, uh, he was a grenadier guard, and that's apparently part of the Queen's Guard. And so he says, quote, I am doing this so that the children and their parents don't have to come out to collect their meals. Otherwise, they would be passing other people on the street, and this makes sure that they get at least one good meal a day. So, again, not a billionaire, not someone who is, uh, is going to be recognized uh, at, at any kinds of award shows. He's not a celebrity. He's a teacher, and he's doing his part. And his part, although it, it seems maybe to him that it's just a small thing, it's definitely going to have a, a positive impact on the lives of these kids. They are going to continue to at least get one good meal every day because of the efforts of him and his fellow teachers at uh, at Western Primary School in Grimsby. So kudos to him. And I've said it before on this show, and I will say it again. If you can think of a way to help, no matter how small it might feel to you, try it. Because the worst that can happen is maybe your efforts don't completely work out and nothing comes of it. But you still tried, and you learned something in the process of it. But if it does work, you could be making a huge impact 
and the lives of many people who you might not even meet face to face, but your efforts will have helped them get through this pandemic. And that's, that's fantastic. It's, it's something to aspire to. So don't, don't let your own brain get in your way of, of doing something to help no matter because we always have, you know, that little voice in the back of our head saying, oh, are you kidding? It's not going to matter. Why would you even try? You've never done that before. Why would you think this could work now? Whatever. Don't listen to it. Don't listen to that voice. Try it. It doesn't hurt to try it because you could be doing something amazing for someone that you'll never even know. So that's, that's my soapbox. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. Uh, this was all over social media, so there's a good chance that you've probably already seen this, but uh, I had to share it because this was uh, this was just too funny to me. So I'm not even going to give an intro to this. Just enjoy. You gotta admit, he's he's good at what he does. Look at him go. <laughs> Just one after the other. Oh, okay, that one's going back on the shelf. That one, no, oh, that one got away. No, no, get back here. You're not going anywhere. He even got the one off the, off the camera. Okay, no, now he's back in there. Now he's good, okay. And let's go. <laughs> Love it. So, yeah, I I don't know. It's cute. I know it's been everywhere, but it makes me smile every time I see it. So I wanted to to share it with you because I'm pretty sure that uh, that it, it's a it's a good way to start off the morning. I don't know. I love it. Never used to be about animal videos before this whole pandemic thing. But I'm finding them very helpful to maintaining a, a positive attitude here. Okay, so now this is definitely uh, <laughs> this is definitely a uh, strange but true news story. Uh, so. Yeah, that's uh, that's the heading this is going to come under today. A lot of people are familiar with this man here. It's uh, Anthony Fauci, and he has been instrumental in formulating our response here in the United States to dealing with the COVID-19 outbreak. And... <laughs> Uh, there's a company that makes bobbleheads, and they made one of Anthony Fauci and have raised over $100,000 to buy coronavirus masks. So, yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> it's, uh, it's part of supporting the American Hospital Association's 100 Million Mask Challenge. And so the National Bobblehead Hall of Fame and Museum decided that this might be a good way to help fund that goal. So Fauci, if you don't know much about him, they give a little bio here in the New York Post article. He's 79. He's been the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases since 1984. He has advised a plethora of presidents over the years, and he's kind of taken on uh, almost a cult-like status in America because he's a recognizable face that, that he has a very calming demeanor and he, he really knows what he's talking about. So if you want a bobblehead of him, and that's not really what it's going to look like, of course, that's a, just a fun little gift there. 
You can buy them online at the museum's online store. They're $25 plus an $8 shipping charge, and the museum is donating $5 from every sale to support the 100 million mass challenge through the new uh, Protect the Heroes campaign. So, you know, why not? Why not make a bobblehead of the, the person who's, who's responsible in large part for uh, advising and putting in place guidelines that are going to save the lives of millions of people? Is that not worthy of a bobblehead? I would say it would be worthy of a pop figure, too. You know the ones I'm talking about, the pop vinyl dolls. Those are awesome. I know, right, Nancy? It is funny. It's great, and I love it. And so, yeah, just wanted to share that with you, because why not? Okay. Now, on this one, if you've watched the show before, you know I'm a fan of anything having to do with uh, optical illusions or even just displays of art that make you kind of step back and, and, and go, wait, how, how did they do that? This guy, this guy, I, <laughs> his name is Young Sun Kim. And what he does is nothing short of amazing. So I'm going to play a little bit of this video. And you're not going to believe it. So you might be looking at these and, and thinking to yourself, those are amazing photographs. Look at the detail he, he captured with his camera of these fish in their fish bowls. And you could be forgiven for thinking that, but they are not photographs. These are paintings. These are paintings that he did. And the process is extremely involved in creating these. There's a, there's a really intense link on Art Insider on their YouTube channel that shows in detail the process that he goes through to create these. But it's all done with paintbrushes. And I just have never seen anything like this. It just blew me away when I saw this. I just, I cannot, I cannot fathom in my brain how one, how someone could do something so realistic that it looks like you took a, a photo of it, but it's all just painting. It's all by hand. This isn't something that was done digitally. He didn't create this in Photoshop or Illustrator. He painted it. It's just unbelievable to me. I And I love this. This is the kind of thing that just blows my mind, gets me excited about art. Uh, and you can... You can see some of his collections on this uh, online art gallery called Sachi Art. And uh, if you want one of his paintings, one of the actual paintings and not a print done, repro a print reproduction of his work, uh, be prepared to mortgage your house. This one sold for $81,000. This one sold for $41,000. You can still get this one. Look, it's still available. $101,000. Amazing. Amazing. Absolutely. Brilliant. Again, I cannot draw a straight line with a ruler. This guy paints with such realism that it looks like a high quality photo shoot was done rather than painting with little brush strokes. Fantastic. Love it. I hope you enjoyed that. I just, I wanted to be an artist so bad when I was a kid. I really did. And I just never, I don't have the talent. I have the heart, 
but I don't have the talent. And those of you who watch South Park know what that's referencing there. So I will put a, a link, of course, to the collection down below in the description on my uh, YouTube and Facebook, wherever you're, if you're watching it in either of those two areas, you'll be able to, to click on it there. And the last story, uh, because again, got to give credit where credit is due. Tyler Perry. I've never watched any of his movies. Just not my bag. But he is amazing and has a heart of gold, apparently. Because he bought all of the groceries for all of the seniors during senior hour at Kroger and Winn-Dixie in his area. Not just one store, not just two stores, every single store in Atlanta. Well, okay, not every single store. Every, let's see what they're, okay. So basically it's 44 Kroger locations in Atlanta and 29 Winn-Dixie supermarkets in New Orleans. So he just said, here's, here's what I want to do. I, I'm going to make a donation. I want you to use the money to pay for all the groceries on this day for all the seniors during senior shopping hour. And he did it at 44 Kroger locations and 29 Winn-Dixie supermarkets. And there are photos all over the internet that you can see on here and wow yeah I, I don't know if you're saying wow to tyler perry or, or wow to the artist because there's a, i know there's a delay on the live stream here but both of them are wow as far as i'm concerned but there are photos all over the place of just the shocked surprised and grateful seniors who fully expected to pay for their groceries and were told no no it's okay tyler perry's got you <laughs> And he apparently does stuff like this often. Uh, says that uh, his most recent act of charity before buying all the seniors groceries, uh, he left a $21,000 tip for restaurant workers in Atlanta. And then in 2018, he paid off nearly half a million dollars worth of layaways. Uh, at Walmart. So good on him. Love it. Like I said, I tried watching a Medea film. Didn't like it. Just not my thing. Doesn't mean it was a bad movie by any means. It's just not my thing. I also don't like 99% of Jim Carrey movies because I don't like wild, wacky face stretching mugging for the camera jim carrey i am much more about eternal sunshine of the spotless mind jim carrey that's that's what i appreciate he is a good actor when he's not being a raving lunatic and i know i'm in the minority on that because a lot of people love his ace ventura movies and I, liar liar the one where he's a, a lawyer that can't can't tell a lie all day or can't say I don't know, is that liar, liar, or yes, man? I don't know. They all blur together in my head because they're all equally dismissible to me because it's not my thing. But, but yeah, Tyler Perry, not a fan of his movies, but I'm a fan of what he does when he's not making movies because that's fantastic. And that takes us to the end of the half hour. It's already gone. Cannot believe that. Not liking Jim Carrey commie talk. Sorry, don't like Jim Carrey, the comedian. I, I like Jim Carrey, the dramatic actor. So there you go. <laughs> but it is the end of the show. Thank you so much for joining me today. Do me a favor. If you liked this, if you had fun, if you think this is a good, a, if you think the concept of a live show dedicated to good news is a good thing, do me a favor, share the video link with your friends. After the show's over, it stays up as a video. Click on it, share it to your Facebook page, share it with your friends over on Periscope or, 
or on Twitter if you don't have a Periscope account. Just get the word out. I love doing this. I would love to continue doing this. Um, so anybody you can tell about it, if you really like it, I would appreciate that. It does help. And then if you want to support the show directly, you can find me over on Patreon at Casual Coffee. And that's it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate every single one of you. I will see you right back here tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. And until then, I'm Ken McKim. You take care. And remember, when you can choose to be anything in life, choose to be kind. Because now more than ever, kindness matters. So thank you. Have a good morning, Nancy. Have a good morning, Sean. And anyone else out there who's watching, if it didn't comment, I'll see you tomorrow.